Joseph Murphy How to activate the psychic money machine To prosper means not just to succeed, but to thrive. When you prosper, you expand. You grow spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and intellectually. In order to truly prosper, you must become a channel through which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. If you sincerely want to achieve this, I suggest that you establish a definite method of working and thinking, and that you practice it regularly and systematically every day. A young woman came to me after one of my public lectures. She introduced herself as Betty S. and said excitedly, Such a wonderful idea came to me while you were speaking. I suddenly saw my conscious mind as an indelible pen. The more I use it to think about what I really want, the more clearly my desire gets written on my subconscious mind. Then my subconscious gets busy making it come true. Is that right? That's exactly right, I told her, smiling at her enthusiasm. You have the power to inscribe your true desires on your subconscious by frequently devoting your mind to the desires of your heart. I'm going to do it, Betty exclaimed, snapping her fingers. There are two things I really want, so I'll think of each of them separately. Then it's up to my subconscious to bring them about in the best way it can. I know it'll work. I asked Betty if she was willing to tell me her two desires. Oh, sure, she replied. The first one is to take my mother on a vacation to Mexico. She's always wanted to visit Mexico, but she never had the chance. And the second one, I asked. She hesitated, and her face turned pink. I want to meet someone, fall in love and get married. I smiled. Let's see how your subconscious handles that. We discussed how she would approach inscribing her two desires. For the first one, she decided that she and her mother would both visualize themselves packing, boarding the plane, arriving in Mexico, and exploring the picturesque streets of the town they were visiting. As they did so, both separately and together, they would repeat the thought, infinite intelligence opens up the way in divine order. Three weeks later, Betty showed up at my office all excited. You're not going to believe this, she said. Some kid came by last week selling raffle tickets to benefit the local community centre. I bought a book of five. Well, the drawing was last night, and my ticket was one of the winners. Guess what my prize was? I took a chance. A trip for two to Mexico? Betty stared at me. How on earth did you guess? When they told me I almost fainted. Is that weird or what? No, I replied. It's amazing, but it's not weird. Your subconscious has ways to get results that are truly past finding out. Accept it and rejoice in it. For Betty's second desire, she used her conscious mind pen to write this thought in her subconscious. I know my desire for marriage and happiness is the voice of God in me urging me to lead a full and happy life. I know that I am one with the infinite now. I know and believe there is a man waiting to love and cherish me. I know I can contribute to his happiness and peace. I can be a great asset to him. I can cherish, love and inspire him to greatness, just as he inspires me. He loves my ideals, and I love his ideals. He does not want to make me over, neither do I want to make him over. There are mutual love, freedom and respect between us. These words go forth and accomplish where unto they are sent. I have written this request in my subconscious mind with faith and confidence, and I decree it is done, finished, and established in my deeper mind. Whenever I think of marriage, I shall remind myself that the infinite intelligence of my subconscious is bringing this to pass in divine order. A few weeks later, she needed some dental work. Her appointment was the dentist's last of the day. Afterwards, they got into a conversation. When Betty told him about her trip to Mexico, he asked her to join him for dinner at his favorite Mexican restaurant. Their interest in each other deepened. Sometime later, I had the joy and satisfaction of performing their marriage ceremony. Betty S. achieved her desires through her insight into the wonders of her subconscious mind. Think prosperous and wholesome thoughts, and wonders happen as you pray. Keep your attention on whatsoever things are lovely and of good report. Radiate abundance, goodwill and riches to others. 
They will pick it up subconsciously, and you will attract wonderful people into your life. They will prosper, and you will prosper. A rich person walks in the mental attitude that wealth is like the air he or she breathes. Having that state of mind, the person attracts more and more riches of all kinds. The poor person who is constantly picturing and talking of lack, bankruptcy, and hard times attracts these qualities to him or herself. I've prayed for prosperity constantly for years, James told me tonelessly. It's all nonsense. I'm as poor as ever, and that's all I can ever expect. You feel your prayers have not been answered, I said. You got it, he replied. I just hope my situation doesn't get even worse than it already is. I'm in hock up to my ears. I wake up at night worrying about how I'll ever get out of this. James explained that he had worked his way through law school and specialised in oil and gas law. When international developments led to a severe cutback in domestic oil exploration, the corporation where he worked slashed its personnel, including the legal department. As one of the newer lawyers, he was the first to get the boot. Since then, he had had only occasional temporary positions. I don't know why I'm even wasting your time, he added. Even if my prayers worked, how can they have any effect on what OPEC does next? I'm toast. Let me explain something, I suggested. You say you've prayed for prosperity, and I'm sure you have. But you've spent much more of your time worrying about poverty and failure. If you present your subconscious mind with two conflicting ideas, it accepts the dominant one. Your fear of poverty attracts lack and limitation. You mean my own thoughts are the reason for my situation, he said dubiously. Exactly, I said. Every thought is creative unless it is neutralized by a counter thought of greater intensity. Your thoughts and beliefs about poverty have been much stronger than your belief in the infinite riches all around you. When you visualize poverty, you help create poverty. And if you begin to visualize wealth, you will produce wealth. By the end of our conversation, James had made a firm decision to change his thinking. At his request, I wrote out a prosperity prayer for him and urged him to meditate on it first thing each morning and last thing each night. This is the prayer I wrote for James. I know there is only one source, the life principle, from which all things flow. It created the universe and all things therein contained. I am a focal point of the divine presence. My mind is open and receptive. I am a free-flowing channel for harmony, beauty, guidance, wealth, and the riches of the infinite. I know that health, wealth, and success are released from within and appear without. I am now in harmony with the infinite riches within and without, and I know these thoughts are sinking into my subconscious mind and will be reflected on the screen of space. I wish for everyone all the blessings of life. I am open and receptive to God's riches spiritual, mental and material, and they flow to me in avalanches of abundance. James diligently focused his thoughts on God's riches rather than on poverty. He made it a special point not to deny what he affirmed by worrying about his financial situation. For 10 minutes every morning and evening, he affirmed the truths expressed in his prosperity prayer. He knew that by doing so, he was actually inscribing these truths in his subconscious mind and encouraging it to become active and release its hidden treasures. A month later, I received a letter from him. Here is an excerpt. Last week I went to a free concert in the park. I accepted the music joyously as a gift, instead of brooding over the fact that I couldn't have afforded to buy a ticket. During the intermission, I got into a conversation with a couple sitting near me. They were from out of town, and I was able to give them some tips about restaurants and shops. When they learned my profession, the woman Joan said, I do believe this was meant to be. She told me that she and her husband were independent operators, what used to be called wildcatters. They had decided to expand into my state, and their first priority was to find an attorney who knew all the ins and outs of local oil and gas laws. After the concert, they took me to dinner at a fine restaurant, before the meal was over, we'd agreed that I would come to work for them, for a significantly higher salary than my last job and a participation in my division's earnings. It is a dream come true.
God, the life principle, never punishes. This presence always seeks to heal you and to make you whole. Self-condemnation and self-criticism are destructive mental poisons that send psychic pus all over your system, leaving you a physical and mental wreck. When you begin to realize that you are an organ of God and that God hath need of you where you are and that you are loved, needed and wanted, a complete transformation takes place. You begin to release the riches of the infinite as love, goodwill, inner peace and abundance. Richard M., a software engineer, came to consult me. He told me he was recently divorced. My own fault, I guess, he added. I'm just not very interesting. Neither is my life. I go to work, I go to the gym, I go to sleep. Then I get up the next day and do it again. Why would anybody want to share that, or even hear about it? That must be why I don't have any friends. I bored them all to death. Suppose you were trying to analyze a computer program, I said. If you saw that every time it produced a certain message, the result was always the same, what would you think? He rubbed his ear and said, first approximation, the message is causing the result, so I'd try altering the message and see if the result changed. Good, I said. I'd like you to consider the idea that your thoughts are creative. When you tell yourself you are boring and friendless, your negative thoughts actually compound the problem. Whatever we give attention to, the subconscious magnifies and multiplies in our experience. I get it, he said. You're saying if I reverse my thinking, I'll get a different result. I'm game. What do I do next? I suggested he affirm frequently and systematically. I am happy, joyous and free. I am loving, kind, harmonious and peaceful. I sing the song of praise in the Lord, which is my strength. He realized and understood the mental law that whatever he attached to the thought I am, he would manifest and express. He made a habit of affirming these mental truths and his whole life changed. From what had seemed a drab, lonely existence, he went to a full, rich life with new interests, new friends, new close relationships and a new insight into the wonders of the riches within him. How she planned for prosperity and happiness and got results. I'm not complaining, you understand, Claire R. told me earnestly. She had just told me that her husband had a good job with the telephone company. They had two young children, whom Claire stayed home and cared for. I feel stuck on a treadmill. Every day the same thing. Cook, wash up, do the laundry, shop, think of stuff for the kids to do. I'm always tired, and my mind doesn't work the way it used to. It's as if a spark has gone out. You feel that life is against you, I asked. That's it, she agreed. Well, not against me exactly, but passing me by. I explained that her thought images about her condition were helping to create the very conditions that made her unhappy. An emotionally impoverished life is a state of mind, I continued. So are happiness and prosperity. If you can learn to reverse your way of thinking, you will see a real dramatic effect in your life. She began to claim, twice every day, divine right action is mine, success is mine, wealth is mine, happiness is mine. God's river of peace flows through my mind, body and activities, and whatever I do will prosper. As an engineer plans a bridge, so am I planning prosperity and happiness now. I believe implicitly in the law of the Bible which promises, ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. In this way, Claire R. stirred up the gift of God's prosperity within herself. Her relationship to her home, her marriage, and her children changed. She released the imprisoned splendors within. Money came in from totally unexpected sources, and she became completely satisfied with her new lot in life. There are beauty and abundance where you are. God is indescribable beauty, and God indwells you. He walks and talks in you. Your mind and your spirit, your thoughts and your feelings all represent God within you. The invisible life and power within you is God. Your thought being creative is God in action in your life. Begin to contemplate that God's beauty and riches flow through your thoughts, words and deeds and you will pass on the beauty and riches of God to your family, friends and neighbors. 
Give thanks for all the blessings you have. You can make your home beautiful and you can inspire others to experience the riches of your deeper mind. You are the artist, the weaver, the designer and the architect of your life.